Alright guys, thanks for watching. Uh, first of all, I want to start out saying Happy Fourth of July to everybody here in the States. Um, this evening I'm doing a video about MSI Afterburner. Um, you know, some settings here. Um, you know, what to do first. Um, just from my experience using it, which is... Um, I don't know, not too... Not too much experience, but I've got I've got some. I usually use Precision XOC, um, but I've decided to give Afterburner a try, so I've played with it a little bit. Um, the first thing I noticed um, is if you're not on water and you do run uh, air cooling on your video card, like the factory fans, if it's Founders Edition or um, you know whatever cooler came with your third-party card, um, if you mess with certain settings in here changing your fan profiles um, you know maybe you have like a EVGA FTW card which has very efficient air cooling on it you can turn your fans down when they're not needed um, you know some people may even have them turn off at idle um, I know I had an EVGA card that did that automatically when it wasn't being used the fans didn't spin um, the problem with that is once you use a program like this and you go ahead and adjust your fan curves, if you do not set this program to boot up with Windows, um, sometimes it can actually, when you restart your computer, whether you have a power loss, whichever, you turn your, your boot your computer up and you go start playing a game while your fans are not spinning. Um, so your card's getting obviously way too hot than any of us want it to. Um, you know, because they're expensive. In my case, I have a 2080 Ti. No way am I letting that thing hit 70, 80, anything Celsius. <laughs> so, um, but what I found to be a pretty good failsafe for that is to go into the settings here. Start with Windows. Um, this is a very important thing right here. Just for the simple fact that every time if you lose power, whatever, restart your computer, when it starts up, it will start up with Windows. Um... And then, you know, I like mine to start minimize. That way I don't even know it's running. It's just, it's there. It's on the bottom bar, which you'll see down here, the bottom right corner, um, when you hit this here. Um, so, after that, we'll hit apply. And then you're going to want to go and do and click this button right here. Um, so, allows applying current voltage, clock, and fan control settings at Windows Startup. This is another key. So, if it's great, right here, it's grayed out. It's kind of tough to really know that but when you click it now it's not um, so you can click anywhere around here it's good to go um, so now then the next thing I want to get into is you know Pasco cards touring cards um, you really can't damage these cards um, just by using software um, you know the the days of being able to actually control the actual voltage on the card um, its supply of voltage um, it seems to be pretty much over unless you own like a, like a EVGA Kingpin card, um, you know, which you got to download a, additional things for that. Um, I have not got my hands on that, but we have core voltage right here. Um, all this does here is basically allows more headroom voltage. So more voltage that the card can automatically pull. Um, now you'll notice this is grayed out. So we'll need to get into that. Um, power limit here. Uh, you'll notice on the power limit percentage, there's really no scenario where you would not want this all the way up at your card's maximum. Um, this is just, you know, the card is designed to be able to run at this percentage. Um, and that's just, that's, that's just the facts of it. Um, you know, you're gaining an extra 30% roughly of performance um well maybe 30 percent power um you know out of that slider and in my experience on the 2080 ti um and you know that's that's a huge difference um now mine i have the evga 2080 ti xc um now that had a two fan cooler but a very thin low pro um heat sink that went on the video card was probably the least efficient cooler I've ever had. Um, so for me to run at 130, I had to have both those fans max all the time. And it would, I was running 70s constantly, and then it started to hit the 80s, and that's when I was like, nope, we're, I'm going water cooling to avoid that. Um, 
But anyway, you know, monitor your temps. Make sure your fans are set high enough. Um, I always recommend with these cards because they get hot pretty quick. I always recommend, like, if you're setting your your fan curves, and we'll go into more detail on that. Um, I always recommend setting the fan curves for, you know, uh, you can have them pretty much off on all the 20 series cards um, when you're at idle. Um, but I would say once that core hits about 40, you're going to want them running at about 50%. That's what I like to do. Um, and then my next step is once they hit 60, mine are at 100. Um, but you're more than welcome to play with that, of course. But I would always say that once they hit 70, you want those fans at 100. And then everything else below that is, you know, entirely up to you. Just my recommendation. Um, and then, of course, you have your core clocks like, you know, you would you would imagine and, and memory clock um now i've had two 20 series cards um and they all memory clock very well we'll get into more of that too um so okay let's start with the core voltage as you see we don't have access to that so i'm going to go into the settings here and then let's see right here it's going to be unlock voltage control so we're going to do that i'm going to go ahead and unlock voltage monitoring um forcing the constant voltage here what what that'll do is that'll kind of make the card run at full voltage like it's always under load um i don't really see a need for that um these cards are pretty efficient um and boost pretty rapidly so um i, I prefer to leave that off um you know you guys may decide to turn it on you can play with it um it will use more power all the time though so um keep that in mind so now we'll hit apply down here and take a second to apply restarting MSI Afterburner. All right, we'll restart that. <clears throat> it is going to restart. All right. Oh, I see it's hiding down here. All right, here we go. All right, so now you'll see we have core voltage. Um, so with this, you know, it, it's kind of mixed because I've heard some people say, oh, they get better overclocks with it at, you know, 20% or, um, you know, 30%. Me, I'm all the way up. Um, I want my video card. Well, you know, what this is telling my video card right now is that you have plus 100% of what's allowed by that card to pull when it's needed. Um, and I don't want to hold anything back. So... Um, again, I'm on water, you know, I, I don't even notice this thing doing anything. Um, if you watch, uh, some videos, um, I think, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was Jay's two cents in one of his videos. Um, he was even made a comment. He's like, we don't even know if it does anything. I mean, I've run so many benchmarks. This doesn't change anything as far as I've seen, even monitoring the voltages. But I mean, if it is adding or allowing more voltage, I want it enabled. So I max it. Um, so next we have power limit again. Um, do your fan curve, put this at max. Um, and you'll see it, it moves the temp limit up with it. Um, yeah, max the, max the power limit, but the temp limit, you know, you also can max that too. Um, you want to hit this little chain right here. This will stop them from, so you see when they're linked together, both of them move every time you move your power limit. All right. So if you click this here, then you can now move them independently. Um, in my case, what I did with my card um, is at 85. If it ever hit that, I don't, you know, I don't care what game I was playing, what application I was using. I want that thing to throttle down. Um, and I even tested this out. I actually had lowered the temperatures down to uh, down to 75, which I knew my card would hit. And I will tell you, when it throttles down, um, and it throttles down immediately and rapidly, um, I was playing Battlefield Five, and the game did crash. It locked up and it crashed. Um, but it, I just crashed the desktop and, you know, went back. I was actually uh, recording the GPU temp, and sure enough, it hit 75 for a second, and then all the way down. Um, it went back to idle. Um, so uh, I do recommend using that. It's Like I said, these cards are not cheap. Um, and it helps. Um, in my case, I keep it all the way at the max. Um, again, because water. Um, now here we have core clock. Um, now I know my, my 2080 Ti very, very well. Um, you know, 
when I'm benchmarking, I can get 140, 145 um, on water, um, usually without a crash. Um, I have not tried chilled water or any kind of exotic cooling yet. Um, that'll be coming. But uh, for the core clock, um, what you would generally want to do is, I would say for absolutely, probably just about any Turing card, um, you can probably get 90, maybe 80 to 100, no problem, um, with no issues whatsoever. Um, you know, it's these cards, they're, they're pretty good. So with me, I run all day at, whoa, can I type this in? Okay. I run all day at 130, um, and that's just what I like to run. And then, uh, you know, what I also like to do, which we'll do this too, um, because there's another program called uh, OCCT Scanner, which you'll see up here in the top. I'm going to go ahead and open that with this um, and show you guys a really cool way um, to overclock your card and not have to worry about crashing. Um, it's quite phenomenal. I really enjoy it. Um, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, so here's OCCT. So you'll see we have uh, CPU, CPU line pack, GPU 3D. This is what we'll be using in power supply. I'm not going to go into these other, thir thir or other three options right here. We're going to stick with GPU 3D. Um, you'll notice these settings here. I run mine at 4K because that's what I game at. Um, you know, and you'll see it's monitoring all these temperatures and things, all, this, all these goodies. Um, let's pull this down so we can see everything. Okay, so now... Um, I'm going to put this back at zero. So right now my card is not overclocked. All we've done is allowed um, the card to pull extra voltage when needed, and we have increased the power limit to its max, which is 130% in my case. Um, uh, you know, your alls will vary. Some of them are 120, some of them are 140. Um, you know, it, it just it all depends on your card. Um, but definitely check with your card's manufacturers because uh, I know EVGA released a BIOS update that allowed these cards to go to 130. So... I'm sure they're not the only one. Um, so anyway, yeah, like I said, all we did was allowed more voltage overhead, which is, in theory, what this is supposed to be. Uh, what, whether or not that works, we don't know. Um, and then the power limit, as we just discussed. So now, when you hit this green on button right here, you're going to notice that up here in the top left, it's error checking mode, okay? So it, right now, it says zero errors. Now, what, what it's doing is this screen that you see here, um, at 150-ish FPS that I'm at, every second, it's rendering 150 of these screens. And what it's doing is it's looking for any kind of um, difference from one frame to the next. Um, and if it picks up one of those, it'll show a one. Um, and that's if it picks up one error. Let's say, uh, you know, again, I'm drawing like 150 frames on here. But let's say scene one and scene two, um, there was an artifact right here. Um, that our eyeballs can't catch because it's just going way too fast. Well, this will catch it because it knows that there was a discrepancy between two frames. So it would show up as a one. Um, so you can see by upping that uh, voltage overhead, by upping the, the power percentage, we're not getting any errors here. Now, I'm going to turn my card up to a setting. Let's go ahead and stop this. To stop this, you can just hit escape, um, and it stops it. This screen, it'll come up to save it. It only does this the first time you run. Um, once the program's open. So now we're going to go, let's see. So now what you would do in theory, um, and I'm going to speed this up a little bit just for the sake so you guys aren't stuck here watching some long rambling video. Um, you would probably, I would start out at 100 and then run that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this at 100, which I know is good on this card, okay? Um, and I'm going to run this scan. Um, one thing I want to note, this works for memory as well as your core clock. Um, both of these going up too high will cause artifacts eventually, if not a driver lock or even a hard system lock. Um, so this program is super useful. Um, but anyway, at 100, we're going to run again and see if we get anything. Um, so we're running. You'll notice it's counting the time up here. Um, when I was testing for full system stability, there's people that recommend running this like overnight. There is no way I am running this program overnight. Um, to me, it's a complete waste of wear and tear for what little that would be on the on the system, um, electricity, and honestly, I'm just not I'm not that patient. <laughs> so, um, when I'm running something, I run for 30 seconds. So we're at 30 seconds with no errors. Okay, I'm gonna hit the X up here, and 
I'm going up more. So now I'm going to go in increments of 10, okay? So now I'm going to run, actually I'll do 20. I'm going to do 120. Because um, in the past this has brought up some errors on this. So now we're going to scan it again. And now we're watching for these errors up here to see what comes up. So Now another cool feature too is you'll see it shows all your temperatures right down here. Um, which is very, very useful. So your GPU temp, you can see, um, you know, which this, it doesn't really utilize the temperature that much, um, or the GPU that much to increase the temperature. Um, okay, so you can see 120, no errors. All right, let's close out of this. I'm going to jump up to 130, which is what I normally game at, um, and see if we can get an error on here. All right, here we go. Wow. Now I know with Precision X, uh, yeah, Precision XOC, uh, 130 would give me errors in this, but I run it anyway. Um, but it's not a lot. It would be like, after a minute, I would have like six errors. Um, but I also don't have my memory overclocked yet either. Okay. So we're at 30. I'm going to see how high we can go with the afterburner. All right. Well, that's not. So I'm going to go up to 140 now. Uh, you know what, guys? I just realized, because I am new to this, I was not hitting apply. I'm sorry. So we are going to go to 120 where we started. Um, apply. Now it's applied my settings. Now let's run it. <laughs> All right. So now we're looking for those errors there. And see, there it is. It just popped up one error um, after about six seconds or so. So now we have six errors. Eleven. All right, so you can see. So technically, in theory, um, if your let me go ahead and end this. So you can see we're getting some errors. Thirty-one errors in. All right, forty-one errors in thirty seconds. Um, so technically, if you wanted to overclock, if you want to get the best percentage you can out of your card, but have a hundred percent rock stable, um you know, gaming, don't or any kind of application use with it. You wanted your PC to be completely stable. You don't want to see a single error on that test, okay? Um, I know I can run, um, I think it was like 110, um, maybe 115 um, with no errors. So now I'm going to run this. Um, when you're doing the final stability test, I would run it for one minute just to make sure. Um, again, my my whole system is extremely overclocked right now. All right, so you see it's picking up two errors here. Okay, we'll stop it there because it already er picked up an error. And we're going to change this just to 100. Let's see what we get. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, my card is already... The EVGA really overclocks their cards from the factory pretty well. They don't really leave you too much headroom. All right, so you can see here at 100, um, we're about 20 seconds in, and we have no errors. Um, you know, I would run whatever setting you would like for, you know, for, for a full minute. And if you get no errors, go game, um, you know. And if if one of these settings, if you end up locking up or whatever, then, then come back, you know, come back into Afterburner, knock off 5 megahertz or 10 megahertz from the clock, all right. Um no big deal. Um, and now I'll show you here. Um, I normally run 1100 memory um, with no errors. Um, let me apply that and let's run a test here. So I can show you it picking up memory errors as well if they artifact. I don't know that 1100 will pick up even one um, because that's a really stable memory overclock. I actually overclocked my memory based on uh, benchmarking results um, using TimeSpy Extreme and TimeSpy Regular, um, just to verify that, it, you know, the memory is the weird thing. Um, core clock, it, the more you overclock your core, the faster your car's going to run, uh, as long as it doesn't crash, obviously. Um, memory is a bit of a different animal. Um, memory, you can overclock that too fast and actually start 
going down in performance. Um, you'll see your frame rates drop. You'll have lower lows. You'll have lower highs. Um, and yeah, it, it gets pretty pretty weird. Um, but anyway, as you can see, 1100. I'm not gonna let it run the full minute, but 1100 is what I'm normally at. Um, now, most of these Turing cards under regular cooling, even regular water cooling, such as mine, um, which I consider water cooling still a normal a form of normal cooling. It's not exotic until you're you got a cooler and you're you're dunking your radiators in it like Jay like Jay does for Jay's two cents, which I find hilarious. I love that guy. Um, so anyway, uh, around 1250 is what is when these things start to act funny on the memory. Um, I'm just going to run mine to 1200 because I'm sure that's going to artifact somewhere on this program. So now we'll run it again. So now we're at 1200 memory and we're watching the errors in the top left. I'm surprised I haven't errored yet. All right. Okay then. We're going to go to 1250. That's usually the max. Hopefully it doesn't all of a sudden just crash. <laughs> all right, let's see. We're at 1250 memory. Let's see where the errors pile up. All right, so now you can see at 1250 we're getting errors. I've got five already after like six seconds. All right, now 10. I don't want it to crash. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this or kill that one. So yeah, so now you guys kind of understand a little bit here, hopefully. Um, a little bit more. I'm going to up this back to 130 because that's what I game at. Um, yeah, you know, and uh, the last thing I'll go into is probably the fans here. Um, it's set for auto. Uh, you can kind of keep it at that. Um, you know, or you can manually ramp them. I would click this, you know, click it off of auto here. And then when you're overclocking, run them at 100. Um Something to note, though, as far as these Pascal cards and even the new Turing cards here that we have, um, Pascal being 10 series um, last gen cards. Um, however many fans are on your video card, those tap into the entire power draw of the card, uh, meaning the higher your fans are running, they're using more power. That's taking power away from what your video card could be using as more headroom to overclock and auto automatically boost higher. Um, you know, um, adjusting these core clocks, this is just a base core clock, um, that it uses a reference clock. Um, you'll see that it'll fluctuate. My, my 2080 TI will go anywhere from, um, three, 400 megahertz at idle all the way up to when I'm running plus 130, I'm running, uh, 2100 plus megahertz on the core is what it actually reads as, um, so, yeah, don't be alarmed by what it's at here. Um, but, yeah, guys, um, if you have any questions, uh, definitely post below. Let me know. I'm kind of new to these videos on here. But, uh, you know, I watch a lot of tech videos, and I've noticed a lot of people often make comments wondering how to use these programs. Um, so I just, uh, you know, wanted to do what I could to help out. Um Oh, yeah, and the last thing, I, I can't believe I forgot this. You have Fan 1 and Fan 2, okay? Um, if we go into the settings here, into the fan, this is where you adjust your fan curve. <laughs> I can't believe I almost forgot to do that. So you have Fan 1 here, you have Fan 2 here, okay? Um, what this is going to do, so you can see right here, the, the, the stock settings on this are pretty good. You can see at 50 degrees Celsius, they're at 50%. That's pretty legit. Um, and then 60, 60, 70, 70. And then 80, 80. Uh, this is where my discrepancy comes in with these automatic ones. Um, you know, I don't want my video card going over 80 if I can help it. So when mine hits 60, I will usually just slam this guy all the way over here. Done. You know, um, and then you can kind of move these around and make it more gradual so it doesn't make so much noise. Um, but yeah, uh, fan update period. Um, I recommend leaving this at default. If you turn this up to like to the point where it updates so fast, um, it, you can notice an increase in CPU usage. Um, so you really don't need to. Um, it, it's pretty quick as it is, and I would just let that ride. Um, make sure you do the exact same curve for both fans as well. Um, I find that 
with certain coolers, if you have one fan spinning slower than the other, it creates turbulence inside the heat sink. They kind of are meant to work in unison on the heat sink of the video card. Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, hopefully uh, this was useful to some of you. Um, and, yeah, uh, throw me a like down, a uh, thumbs up if you liked it. Of course, you can thumbs down if you didn't. Um, but, yeah, appreciate you for watching. See you in the next one.